Over the last few years, so many people have been wanting more updates on my 3D printing business and I've kind of put that by the wayside. But people want to know about the products that I sell, how I come up with new products, how I get them listed, so many things, how I drive sales. So this video is gonna be just that. So throughout this video, I'm gonna give you every tip and trick that I can. I'm gonna let you in on some ins and outs of my business and I'm gonna do all of this while I am listing a brand new product for sale on my store. This product is actually not one of my own. This is a product by someone else. There's a commercial license for it. I've been given the go ahead to sell it. So I need to process that, get it listed. Let's get started. And so this is kind of where the print farm stands. I'm currently running two K1Cs, a regular K1 and a K1 Max. And for the foreseeable future, I don't really plan to grow this print farm, mostly because I'm not intending on growing the business anymore. It would be great, and if it does grow, I've got a little bit of room to do so. But if it grows, I'm going to stick with printers in the K series lineup. Either stick with K1s or go with the K2s, but the reason that I have kind of focused in on the K-Series is mostly because my business is small. I do not do enough sales or enough revenue in order to merit having better printers, meaning a Bamboo Lab P1S or an X1 Carbon. I need enclosed printers, so the P1P would not work. Uh, I need enclosed printers because I do print in ABS, ASA sometimes, and uh, PETG prints better in enclosed environments as well. So I needed something enclosed and I needed something that was gonna print fast. It needed to be a little bit quieter. Uh, the K1s are a little bit loud, but they are quieter than other options. Uh, and I needed something that was going to be precise. I wanted to be able to click the print button and just walk away. And I know a lot of people that ha have experienced the K1, it wasn't as reliable. And I don't believe these printers are as reliable necessarily as Bamboo's lineup, but these printers are very, very good. As much as they had a really bad launch, the K-Series is fantastic. So that's kind of the uh, ultimate reason why I went with the K-Series printers. And when I go to uh, start printing for inventory, I can simply take the file, load it into Creality Slicer, slice it one time and send it to every printer. And now every printer is going, I'm printing four parts at one time versus, you know, dealing with the uh, inadequacies of one or two or three other printers, different printers having to slice the file four or five times, constantly having to, you know, re-slice files or tune this or tune that. These things, honestly, they just work. So one thing to consider when selling products online is that you do need to provide instructions to your customer if you have something that is just a little bit complicated. So one very important thing to consider is that you do need to take photos of the product, both pre-assembled and assembled, so that you can create a whole entire timeline for the instructions and when the product is assembled, you can get listing photos. In the particular case of this product, I am producing blade guards. Now these blade guards are not a design of my own. They do have a commercial license, so make sure you consider that as well. But because these are not a product of my own, I haven't yet actually assembled them. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take photos pre-assembly because the deck on this automatic lawnmower is full of grass. And that's what these blade guards are supposed to prevent. They're supposed to prevent grass buildups. So I want to get photos 
before so you can see all the grass build up. And then of course I'm going to suck up all the grass. I'm going to assemble the blade guards and I'm gonna take photos afterwards. This way I can A, show that in the instructions and like I said, B, have them for the eBay listing. So fortunately for me, I actually do not need to have a perfectly clear deck for this product for my pictures because I actually already have photos from the original creator and he blessed me with the uh, option to use his photos as my eBay listing. So I want to briefly touch on good high quality photographs for your online listings and this kind of branches out into uh, multiple different realms but firstly I want to talk about how to get high quality photographs and Primarily, I actually just use my cell phone. Most people's phone in today's modern era, your phone is easier to get good high quality photographs very quickly. There's essentially no editing required because the phone actually does most of the editing for you. And basically what I mean by high quality photographs is simply if I take this photo right now, you'll see on screen is this photo has a board game box in the background, you can see the floor, you can see my pants. It's just not a good listing photo, it's not professional. But if I move this out of the way, I resituate this part, and then I take another photograph, I move in just a little bit and take this photograph. Now, the item I'm selling is more cropped in, it's easier to see, it's very obviously the focus of the photo. There's no legs in the way, there's nothing cluttering in the background, it's just easier on the eye. And that's gonna make your customer most likely more interested to purchase an item. This kind of goes similarly with the theory of how you can polish a turd or kind of in the home house flipping market. You could basically take a house, you can put a fresh coat of paint on everything and it automatically looks new, it looks like a good buy. And I'm not trying to tell you guys that you need to intentionally defraud your customers or your potential customers. You need to take realistic listing photos, but just making everything look professional is going to entice people to purchase your product more often. So not only will high quality listing photos typically net you more quantity of sales, higher quality listing photos are typically going to allow you to sell your product at a higher price. If I didn't have high quality photos, meaning for example, I put this on my kitchen counter and I snapped a picture and there were cups in the background or plates or a sink full of dishes or something, I might still get sales because this is a product that people need and they can't get it elsewhere, but people might not be willing to pay $15 for it. They might only be willing to pay, say, $10 for it. So I'm gonna briefly show you what I consider to be some high quality photographs, and these are products that I sell myself, and you're going to notice kind of a trend here. So to start with this particular product, I have listing photos with a clear, clean, white background of all angles of the actual physical product that you'd be purchasing. I have photographs of the product in use, again, with as clean of a background as humanly possible. And then to add a, a little bit of a professional flair and kind of make the customer realize that they're buying a real product and not some kind of a sham, I have good photographs. Uh, these are renders uh, of the 3D model and then the CAD drawing. Now, if you do uh, replicate this particular uh, line of photos, definitely do not have dimensions on your CAD drawing. You really don't want someone stealing your product. So based on that last tip, I'm now gonna begin to take photos for the instructions and the listing photos. So one thing to consider before shipping a product out to your customers is whether it needs partial or full assembly, assuming it needs any assembly at all. In the case of this blade guard uh, particular product, I am doing a partial assembly because I know that most or all of my customers have basically no way or no knowledge on how to do heat set inserts properly. I'm not gonna do a full assembly though, because if I actually put the blade guard on and assemble that, then it's not gonna be shipped flat. And if it's not shipped flat, it's going to cost me or the customer more money and there's going to be a higher possibility that it gets damaged in shipping. So 
how you do assembly is going to be up to you and your product, but that definitely is something that needs to be considered. So what I'm doing here is being as slow and as methodical as possible as I assemble the blade guard because I need to get in the mindset of the customer. I need to assume the customer knows absolutely nothing and from the instruction booklet, they can assemble this themselves without having to contact me. So essentially, like I said, I'm getting in the mindset of the customer and when I think that there might be a question arise, I stop assembly, I take a photograph of it. This way, later on, I can include it in the instructions. And of course, I feel like a broken record here, but definitely, please do not forget as you're doing your final assembly to take photos. This way, the customer, again, has good instructions. You can feel free and should feel free to take more photos than you believe you will need because once you get to the time in which you're building your instruction manual, it's going to uh, greatly help to have as many photos as possible. For this particular side, go ahead and put on your cutting plate. Whoa, got spinning blades trying to cut my finger off. I'm glad that happened on camera because this is something very important to note. Um, that happened to me, so it's probably gonna happen to someone else. In my instruction manual, I'm definitely gonna make note of that. This way the customer um, hopefully doesn't chop their hands off with the uh, blades on this lawnmower. I'm gonna hold on to it this way. It doesn't go slinging around. And I can take my final photograph for the instruction manual. Once again, broken record. And on to uh, assembly of the next part. So what I'm doing here is essentially creating my in stock inventory and I'm taking all of the parts that I have printed already and I'm fully preparing them ready to be shipped. I ship these with pre done heat set inserts because I know the customer most likely cannot do it themselves. But when I do get an order, I don't want to have to pull out my heat set insert machine and put the heat set inserts for a singular product. I can do it so much more quickly and so much more efficiently now, and I can just do 15, 20, 30 at a time. This way, again, when I get a sale, I can just pull it out of inventory, package it up and ship it out. So one way that I keep my costs low for my customer is that I reuse all packing material. That means I don't have to purchase equipment in order to blow up bubbles. I don't have to continually buy rolls of brown paper. Anytime I receive a package in the mail, I always save the uh, all the brown paper. Whether it's a small piece or a big piece, I always save it. Same goes for bubbles. I always save all the bubbles. Now this one actually needs to be thrown away because it's got tape on it. So one way that I manage to be efficient and keep track of inventory is by using these one by one cubes. These are incredibly cheap, very effective solutions. And as you can see, this one bin has nothing but this particular item in it. This is really effective for a few reasons, primarily because I know that these are all gonna sell out. Whether they all sell out in a week or in six months, I know that this product sells I have sold this product for three years and people will buy it. So I have the luxury of printing this many. This is probably about a hundred units. I have the luxury of printing this many units. And whenever I get a sale, all I have to do is go pluck one out of here, package it up, and then we're off to the races. Another really good thing about these storage cubes and keeping an inventory is that I know when I'm running low and I don't have to print on demand. So essentially in here, I know that I've probably got about 30 of these left. When I look in and I realize, oh, I've only got about five or six left, I need to go 
get some material and then reprint these. If I don't have material, I need to order material because at any minute now, I could get a run on these and I could run out. So when it comes to packaging, there's a honestly a lot to consider. For me, I want to be professional while at the same time, I want to save the customer as much money as possible because if I can keep my costs low, I can sell my products low and that means I'll get more sales. That's kind of my motto. And for me, I use reused packing materials everywhere. I use reused paper, reused bubbles. But in some cases, I still need to be a little bit professional. So in the case of this particular blade guard, I've got screws that the, that the customer needs. These are four 30 millimeter screws. The user is, the customer is most likely not gonna have these. I need to supply them. But I can't just take these and throw them in one of these packages and just hope that they find them. That wouldn't make any sense at all. So in a lot of cases, I actually use these clear bags. I bought like three or 4,000 of them for a ridiculously low price, but I use these for everything. And when the customer opens that in their package, it feels professional. It feels like they've opened a real product that they purchased from a large manufacturer. So I use reused bubbles. If you look at this sheet, it's not cut perfectly fine, but that's okay. It saves the customer money because I don't have to buy bubble wrap from large manufacturers. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to buy a bubble machine and fill the bubbles myself. I don't have to have those costs. And just like that, I have a professionally wrapped package that's going to sustain potential damages from the postal service and the customer is going to get a product that is as intended. So you might have noticed in this particular video I have either spoken about efficiency or implied efficiency quite a few times and that's one thing that I have learned over the last three or four years selling online. Being efficient is very good. It will save you a lot of money and it'll save you a lot of stress. And this is another way that I have managed to be very efficient. This is an Exploding Kittens card game deck organizer. Essentially, each of these are for an expansion to the game and it allows you to put the whole game in one box. It's a very desired item and I sell a lot of these, but this requires, you can see three, four, five pieces per order. And if I have to go pluck five different pieces every time I sell one, it could be very tedious. And you might think, oh, it's not that bad, but honestly, if you have to do that and you know, scrummage up five or 10 other orders, every minute counts. And so in this particular case, also, sometimes I sell dark green ones, sometimes I sell black ones, and it's just what the customer wants. But in this particular case, I package all of these in the box right here. And when I get an order, all I have to do is remove the one with the right color, and that's all I have to do. I just package it up, ship it off to the customer, saves so much time, so much hassle, so much stress. Efficiency is the key. All right guys, so I think that is gonna wrap it up. I know this was a super quick video going through the process of coming up with a product and getting it listed and getting sales. If you have any questions on anything that I mentioned in this video or any other questions in general, do be sure to leave them in the comment section below. But now I gotta go because right in front of the camera, I have dinner waiting for me. See you guys later. Bye. No, really, I do. Parmesan crusted chicken. It's gonna be good.